This video does a really good job of illustrating a frustration that we often run into as video game developers. We go out into the world to collect reference for the effects we're trying to achieve, and what we often find is infinite complexity. This video is looking up into the canopy of an aspen grove, and what we can see here are thousands of leaves uh, rippling in the wind. Uh, it's an effect that makes a sound that I really love, but it's also kind of discouraging to look at as a developer. There's so much complexity here. Each little leaf, and there are thousands of them, is pivoting on its own little stem and being blown by the wind, and the wind is being uh, weakened as it collides with each leaf and each stem and each branch. And there's just so much going on here. The trees are swaying, the leaves are wiggling, and somehow I have to achieve this in 30 frames a second or more. So what we need to do as developers is figure out what can I imitate here that will give the impression that this is happening uh, without the infinite complexity that actually exists. One of the things that we do is we take leaves where it might take, you know, a hundred or a thousand polygons per leaf, and we map several of these leaves to a single polygon. Let's take a look at this image here. So here's an image of a texture that we might create, and this has, you know, maybe 75 or 100 leaves on it, and we put this on a single polygon. And that reduces our complexity significantly. But now we've introduced a new problem. The polygon itself, if we want to animate it, will move as a solid unit. So all of the leaves will move together as if they're one. In this tutorial video, we're going to go over a technique for animating the individual leaves on this polygon to approximate the complexity that we got in that reference video. And so let's jump right into Unreal and take a look at how this works. All right, so here we are in the Unreal Material Editor. And you can see that we have our leaf texture here. And we can just take a look at that texture. This is what it looks like. It's a 1024 texture uh, with a nice alpha channel cutting out the leaves. We have our texture coordinates plugged into it, and right now the branch is just static, so we want to animate this. And we've learned from previous tutorial videos that we can animate something like this uh, by using time. So I'm going to bring in a time node and plop that down. And if we add time to our texture coordinates, we'll get some animation. So I'm going to plug my time into the B socket of my add node and plug my texture coordinates into the A socket and then I'm going to plug that into the UVs in my branch. Now this is going to be a little bit nuts but um, we're going to build this up step by step. Okay so you can see that my branch is now moving there's animation there but it doesn't feel like wiggling leaves at all so the first thing that we need to do is add a couple of controls to control how much movement there is. So I'm going to add a multiply node and we're going to multiply time by uh, kind of a small value. I'm going to add a constant here. And let's multiply time by, uh, let's just slow it down a little bit. Let's say 1.4 for now. We'll multiply time by that. Now the other thing that we need to do is uh, slow down how much is actually moving. Oh. Uh, first, before we do that, you can see that it's just scrolling constantly right now. And here I'll plug this in and it'll actually speed it up a little bit because I have a 1.4 multiplier. It's scrolling constantly and what we want it to do is wiggle or we want it to go back and forth. And the way that we achieve that is with a sine wave. So I'm going to add a sine node here. And what this does is as my time value increases, sine will go back and forth between negative one and one 
uh, given an ever increasing value. So I'm just going to plug this right into sign. And then I'm going to plug that into my add. And what we're going to see now is that my texture coordinates are going to shift back and forth. And it's going extremely fast. So it's kind of hard to tell what's going on right now. But let's see if we slow down time a little bit. Maybe uh, multiply this by 0 0.1. And so now you'll be able to see a little bit better what's actually happening here. So my whole branch is shifting between negative 1 and 1. And this is significantly more movement than I actually want. So what we need to do now, after we've done this sine wave, is add another multiply node. And we need to multiply this sine value by something really small. I'm going to copy my constant node here and plug it in. And then we're going to set this to 0 0.006. I'm just going to tone this down a lot. Let's see what we get. All right, so you can see it's been toned down significantly. I don't know if you can even see it moving anymore. I'm going to set my time value back to my original 1.4 so you can see it moving. Let's see what we get here. All right, so my whole branch is moving now. It's wiggling just a little bit, but you can see that with these multiply nodes, we've kind of got it under control now so that the branch is moving uh, within a reasonable amount for uh, how much wiggle needs to take place. What I need to do next is find a way to isolate individual leaves on this branch so that I can make individual leaves uh, wiggle uh, in different amounts from the others. In order to do that, what I need to do is paint a mask that looks like this. This is my uh, leaf texture. And I took it into Photoshop and I painted um, green, blue, and red to isolate individual leaves. And you can see that these splotches are really low resolution and chunky. You don't need a high res texture for this mask. All you need are uh, just enough to, to isolate individual leaves. And you can go outside the boundaries of them uh, as long as you're able to designate uh, individual leaves as belonging to uh, the red group, the green group, or the blue group. In this texture that I'm creating, I'm not actually representing color with these uh, masks. I'm just using the individual red, green, and blue channels uh, to represent different groups of leaves. So let's switch back to Unreal. And I want to show you what this mask looks like. Here's my mask texture in Unreal. And you can see that I have red, green, and blue. And if I turn off the, these other channels, here's my red channel, my green channel, and my blue channel. And you can see that I've been able to separate these leaf groups out uh, by using this mask. So let's go back to our shader and incorporate the mask in. So here's my mask texture. Let's take these time controls that I've created and move them over just a little bit to create room for my uh, mask texture. And I'm also going to bring up these other values because these are these are numbers that I've um, I've tweaked before. And instead of my uh, individual 1.4 value for time, I'm going to wire this constant 3 in, and it has 1.4, 1.66, and negative 1.33. What I'm doing here is instead of a single time value, uh, I now have three time values, and all three of them are going through this sine wave. And instead of a single uh, size value here, I'm going to multiply this by uh, 0 0.006, negative 0 0.0065, and 0 0.0055. So what this is doing is instead of just a single channel, now I have three channels. And I'm just going to uh, compact these a little bit so that I can fit them in. just kind of clean up my nodes a little bit. And then I'm going to take the, these 
time values and multiply them by my mask. Okay, and then once I've got that plugged in, I'm gonna split those out and then add them together. So I have my red mask, my green mask, and my blue mask, and I've added all of those together. Now I'm gonna bring these guys down and add this to my UV coordinate. And let's take a look at what we get. Okay, so you can see here, I've got individual leaves and they're wiggling according to which group they're in uh, based on the mask that I painted. So I have some leaves that are in my red mask group, some leaves that are in my green mask group, and some leaves that are in my blue mask group. And I'm doing all of that together here uh, where I set up my time, uh, my distance multiplier, and then multiply that by my mask and add these values all together. Pretty cool, so this is basically the effect that I'm going for. And up until now, I've been showing this preview in unlit mode, but I'm gonna switch over to lit mode so that we can take a look at the last little piece of what I'm gonna do. I have a couple of more nodes down here, and what I'm gonna do is uh, control the normals of my leaves with my animation, just like I've been controlling uh, the wiggle of the leaves. So here I have a multiplier of 0.9, and I'm gonna wire the result of my sine wave into that. And then here I have my mask, and I'm gonna multiply my mask here. And then I'm gonna add that to my vertex normal. So I have the vertex normal of the polygon, and if I add this animated value to my vertex normal, then I can use that as my final normal map. And normal purists are gonna look at this and go, Ugh, yuck, what are you doing to your normal? But if I take this and I plug this into my normal, I'll show you what this is gonna do. It's just gonna wiggle the leaves a little bit so that it looks like instead of just moving back and forth, they're actually kind of wiggling a bit. And this is a pretty cool effect that makes the leaves feel a little bit more 3D than just being mapped directly onto uh, a flat polygon. And so this is imitating the wiggling that we saw in that reference video at the beginning. Now, one thing that's important to know is that we're trying to make this effect as cheap as possible because generally in video games, vegetation is fairly expensive to draw. And so there are a lot of things that we've left out. Uh, for one thing, you can notice that all of the leaves are wiggling in one single diagonal direction. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a lot more complexity to this shader and make the red, green, and blue groups uh, wiggle in different directions. But in this case, I've chosen to um, just make them wiggle in one direction, but move in different distances and different time offsets. So that's a detail I chose to leave out intentionally to make the shader cheaper. Now, if you wanted to, you could go back in and add that if, if you'd like. Um, but one of the things that we face as shader artists is we have to create an effect that achieves uh, the look that we're going for, but make it as cheap as possible uh, so that we can keep the frame rate up for the player. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of before and after of what this effect can look like on a tree. All right, here's a tree, and you can see that we have vertex animation applied here. It's kind of moving around in the wind. But as I said at the beginning, the entire polygon is moving, and you can tell that the individual leaves are not really animated. It's just kind of moving the whole polygon instead of looking like the, the reference video that we looked at at the beginning. So we need to be able to move these leaves around if we actually want this to feel like a realistic tree. So let's take a look at what it looks like uh, with our shader applied. And so here's what our tree looks like with the wiggling leaf shader applied to it. You can see that there's a lot more life and it's a lot more similar to the original reference footage that we looked at. And it doesn't look any longer like the 
polygons are moving around as a single unit, but all of the leaves feel like uh, they're rustling independently. Uh, even though there's only actually three groups, the red, green, and blue group, uh, it feels a lot more alive and there's a lot more going on in this tree. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to uh, give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future.